Angus Delaney rounds out the core four characters of Night in the Woods. Though he doesn't receive as much attention as Greg or B, he still plays a very important role in May's growth. While Greg builds May back up, and B teaches her to be a better friend, Angus reminds her of something that could have only come from a person with his troubled and tragic background. He reminds May that as bad as she has it, things could be much worse. Because even after everything May's gone through, she's still better off than a lot of people, including our favorite fedora-wearing bear. But before I begin, I'd like to provide a content warning, as this video will be covering the abuse that Angus suffered as a child. We meet Angus on May's very first day back home. Though she was friends with him in high school, it's apparent that they weren't really all that close. Early on, they spent a lot of time talking about their mutual interests, like video games, specifically Demon Tower, and he even helps May fix her computer. But their conversations don't really go much further than that. It's a stark contrast to Greg, who hits on the serious topics right away. So based on this, we can conclude that prior to the events of the game, Angus's primary role in May's life was as Greg's boyfriend. That will change, of course, almost regardless of the path the player takes. But before May ever has an opportunity to dive deeper into Angus's backstory, we hear about it in bits and pieces. It's an effectively done slow burn that creates a sense of mystery about his past. It makes the player curious to learn more. This kicks off in earnest at the party in the woods, when May drunkenly reveals that her dad and Angus' dad used to go out drinking together. May gives away a lot of her own trauma here, saying that her father had to stop drinking because of the way he treated her and her mother when he was drunk. Greg lets May know that she crossed a line, but Angus doesn't offer much of a response. The implication here is clear. While May's father got his drinking under control, Angus's didn't which is something that becomes abundantly clear later on. For the next several days, we continue to learn more about Angus's past through a series of small drips. When Angus leaves for the night to visit his family, it's alluded to as a bit of an ominous thing, which only makes his situation all the more concerning. During Greg's third hangout, he shares a bit more about Angus's family. He calls them pure trash, he says that he feels compelled to be a good person for Angus, because his life up to this point has been so difficult. But it's not until the second half of the game that we find out why. In one of the detective segments, we get the opportunity to hang out with Angus on our own for the first time. I'd be interested to see the statistics on how many people choose this option. I could see people jumping for it, as Angus is still a bit of an unknown at this point in the game, or something people shy away from in the interest of continuing to get to know B and Greg better. Feel free to tell me how you handled this decision in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. In any case, Angus's lone hangout takes us to Possum Jump, a park and a trail in State Forest just outside of town. It's an important place for Angus. When he was a scout, he camped at Possum Jump. Given his difficult upbringing, it's likely that the scouts were a welcome retreat for Angus a place where he could feel loved and safe. It's clear that he feels a strong bond with the place, as he gushes about it as soon as it comes up in conversation. And while there, he unloads a wealth of information. He tells May about how limestone was formed, and explains how the region probably looked in prehistoric times. He even tells her about his asthma and running cross country. It's a wonderful segment, and you can really see May and Angus bond as they go further up the trail. Much like with B in Fort Lucene Mall, I think you can make the argument that Possum Jump serves as a metaphor for Angus opening up. As they go up the hill, the information he reveals gets progressively more illuminating, giving us a clearer picture of who he is beyond Greg's boyfriend. Until finally, at the very top of Possum Jump, he reveals why his life has been so difficult. While looking up at the stars, he describes in detail the abuse he suffered at the hands of his parents. His father, as we inferred earlier, did hit him. But his mother was worse. She didn't want him, often refused to feed him, and would go so far as to lock him in the pantry overnight. Sometimes, in a desperate bid to escape, he would try to manifest magical powers so he could break himself out. 
It's a harrowing revelation. One that left me at a loss for words. To think that someone so compassionate, so kind, and so thoughtful could go through something so terrible is hard to fathom. Towards the end of the segment, Angus makes a statement that essentially sums up his outlook on life. He says that he believes in a universe that doesn't care, and people who do. It's a beautiful phrase, and easily one of the most powerful in the game. But when you factor in his parents' abuse, there's some horrifying subtext. If Angus believes in a universe that doesn't care, and people who do, then what he's saying is that the things his parents did to him were so terrible that they essentially are no longer people to him. They're just malevolent entities who make up the greater uncaring universe. And I can think of no greater reflection of how terribly Angus's parents must have treated him than that. Interestingly, we see the impact of this reveal on May right away. May's never at a loss for words. She typically responds to the stories of others by sharing more about herself, or commiserating, or just making some type of clear follow-up statement. But here, just about all May can manage to convey is her shock and sympathy, followed by her desire to beat the hell out of Angus's parents. To me, that's a strong indication of just how much Angus's story of suffering has affected her. And it should. And on a level deeper than just sympathy. Because it should also make May realize that as bad as she has it, there are people out there who've got it much worse, particularly when it comes to their family situation. May's parents are far from perfect. They both have their issues, and they seriously screwed up at the beginning of the game when they forgot to pick her up from the bus station. But you can't argue that they don't support her. After the killer incident, when May bashed Andy Cullen's head in with a bat, they paid for his medical bills, to the point where the family went deep into debt. Despite this, they still managed to get her to college by taking out a second mortgage on their house. Would Angus's parents have done something like that for him? No chance! They didn't want him to begin with. If he'd started causing trouble around Possum Springs, they'd have done something even worse to him. Even aside from their financial support, May's parents demonstrate a desire to build a true connection with her. It's why May's dad asks her to watch Garbo and Molloy with him every night. Or why May's mother takes her to Jenny's field and encourages her to visit her at the church. Angus will never have a relationship like this with his parents. Though he continues to visit his mother, it's more out of a sense of obligation than anything else. As flawed as her parents are, they still love and support her, while Angus's parents neglected and abused him. May's life has been difficult, and she's suffered far more than she deserves. But for all the time we spend exploring this topic in Night in the Woods, it's important for her to remember that as bad as she has it, there are people out there who've got it worse. People who don't have the benefit of a support system like May has. People who suffered terribly at the hands of the people who were supposed to love them the most. Fortunately, I think you can make the argument that this is a lesson she does indeed learn. In her final conversation with her mother, she promises to tell her why she left college over dinner that evening. That's a significant step for May. There are multiple reasons why she does this, including the realizations that she has during her final confrontation with the black goat. But I think that the lesson of Angus, that she should be grateful for the family she has, because there are people out there who aren't so fortunate, certainly plays a part. There's another message too, which I think is worth discussing here. As is perfectly clear at this point, Angus has been through some serious shit in his life. But by the time we meet him in game, he's doing pretty well for himself. He's got a decent job, a good group of friends, a band to play in, and an awesome boyfriend who loves and supports him. And while we'll never find out what happens to him and Greg and their plan to move to Bright Harbor, I'd like to believe that it does work out for them. None of that will erase what Angus's parents did to him, but it does show that there's a path forward. All of this is to say that the story of Angus demonstrates that your past doesn't have to define you, and that's a message that's just as important for May as learning to appreciate what she has. Because no matter how old she gets, no matter what she does, some people in Possum Springs 
will always remember her as the kid who nearly killed Andy Cullen. But as Angus shows us, it is possible for her to grow beyond all that and put the past behind her. Typically, I end these videos by addressing you, the viewer, and discussing what you can glean from this character and my analysis. So first, I'd like to say that I certainly hope you haven't suffered like Angus has. But in my old job, I used to work with people who had similar stories, so I know that he's not an anomaly. So if you're out there listening to this video and find yourself relating to Angus's backstory, then I want you to know that I'm sorry for what you've been through, and that I hope you're doing better now, just like Angus is. And if you're like me, someone who can't relate to Angus's abuse, then I hope you come away with the same lesson that May did, to appreciate what we do have, because so many people out there aren't so fortunate. Thanks for watching. Covering a story as heartbreaking as Angus's is never easy, so hopefully I did right by him and this topic. In my next Night in the Woods video, I'll finally be releasing my long gestating video on a potential connection between the city council and the cult. But first, we'll be taking a look at a new game that's coming out in a few weeks that I think will interest fans of Night in the Woods. It's called Fall of Porcupine. I played its demo a few nights ago, and I'm very excited to share my thoughts on it with all of you. See you guys then.